Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. I'm really excited for today's tutorial because I am going to go through how you can paint this beautiful Valentine wreath step by step. So let's get started and don't forget to like and subscribe. For supplies, I have a piece of 8x10 watercolor paper with a heart drawn with pencil in the center of the paper. Now today I'm trying a new brand of paper that I got for Christmas and this is the first time I will be using it, so we'll see how it goes. This paper comes in a pack of 12 sheets, it's 140 pound, and the paper has a really nice deep texture to it more than this Canson paper that I normally use. Now this Canson paper is often my go-to because you get 30 sheets in a pack, the price point is really good, and the quality is good enough for what I usually am using it for. Then I have a watercolor brush. The size I'm using today is a number 10 round brush, but you could really probably use any brush size. Just make sure that it has a nice point at the tip. I also have a calligraphy marker with a flexible tip for some optional lettering at the end. Clean water, a paper towel, and watercolor paints. Now, if you watched my tutorial from last week, you'll notice these are the same three colors I used. In fact, they are the leftovers from the last tutorial that I have rehydrated. So, if you still have any paint left over after today, you can go back and use the rest on my tutorial from last week so you don't waste any of your paint. The colors I have today are quinacridone rose, mauve, and sap green. If you need any more information on any of these supplies, you can find a detailed list by clicking on the description of this video. All right, let's see what kind of painting we can shake out of this brush. So first, let's get some of this pink and apply it to the tray. Then take some water and mix it in to thin it down to make a nice light pink color. Now we're gonna paint a loose rose near the bottom left of the heart. Start with a dot for the center of the flower, then paint a few petals that surround that dot. Now we want the center parts of the flower to be the darkest and then make the petals lighter in value as we move outward. So after the center is done, rinse and dry your brush off and use your damp brush and pull a little bit of that color from the center outward and use it to create the next layer of petals. Try to leave a few unpainted or white spots in between some of the petals to give the rose some sort of definition. Otherwise, it will turn into one big blob of color. When the second layer of petals are done, rinse and dry your brush off again and use the same method as before to make these last and outermost petals the lightest. Now let's re-darken the center of the rose by adding in some more pink and maybe even just a touch of purple while the paint is still wet so that it will blend in. Now let's make another rose near the top left of the heart, the same as we just did, only smaller in size. Now let's darken up the pink in the mixing tray just a little by adding some more quinacridone rose and maybe even just a hint of the mauve purple. Then let's paint some loose stems of flowers stemming out from the sides of the roses. Paint them so they follow near the pencil line. Now these flowers are really just blobs of color that I'm making using circular motions. I am painting these loose flowers so they are the largest right next to the rose. Then they gradually get smaller as I move away from the rose. You can paint as many of these as you want. Now as you watch or you work on this, I'm going to tell you a little something about myself. One semester in college, I had an oil painting class, an acrylic painting class, and my first ever watercolor class, all in one semester. Now I did really well in any art classes that I took throughout college, but for some reason, I really struggled with watercolor. I mean, I tried my very best, but it just didn't click with me. My professor would give us painting assignments, and then we'd bring them back to class the next time, and she'd have us all hang them up in front of the class. And we'd go through and discuss each and every one. There were multiple times through that year that I was literally embarrassed to hang up my painting because I thought I had done such a terrible job. Anyway, long story short, I didn't get a terrible grade, but even after the class was over, I still was not satisfied with what I was doing. I knew I could do better. 
So I decided right then and there, I was going to figure this watercolor medium out on my own and keep working and practicing until I could feel pleased and proud of my work. Now here I am many, many years later with a watercolor YouTube channel because I didn't give up. And now watercolor is one of my absolute favorite mediums. So for any of you who feel like you can't paint, I'm here to tell you, you can. It may take some hard work, some time, some patience, but you can do it. Okay, back to painting. Let's finish off these stems of flowers by adding some green going through the center of the flower as well as a few thin grasses that can shoot out from the tops or the sides of these flowers. Okay, now let's add some leaves or even branches of leaves stemming out from the roses and maybe even a few near the stems of the loose flowers. Try to have some of the leaves slightly different in sizes and if you're painting near the heart pencil line, try to paint the leaves so they follow the curve of the line. Now that my roses are completely dry, I'm gonna come back to the centers of them and add just a little bit more color and lines of definition. Now, if you get too much color or it's too dark, use your paper towel to take some of that color back off. Next, using some green and the very tip of your brush, make some thin lines following the curvature of the remaining empty areas around the heart. I've also decided to curve the ends of these lines for kind of a wistful look, but you can choose whether you do this or not. Now rinse your brush and let's darken up the pink in the mixing tray again by adding more purple and more pink. Then we'll add a few small flowers shooting out from the green vines we just painted. These flowers are pretty simple to paint too. To paint these, I just paint two petals in a horizontal line, then add two or three petals to the top center so they appear to show off the side of the little flower. Paint several of these in various sizes all along the vines. Next, add some green stem lines to connect these little flowers to the vine. Now if you want to, paint some small rounded leaves along the vine to fill in some of the gaps. Thank you. 
Really quick, I'm also going to add some more grassy lines here and there. After I had a chance to step back and look at my painting, I felt like I needed a few more small flowers here at the bottom to balance my heart out better. Okay, for the finishing and optional touch to this painting, I'm going to write Happy Valentine's Day on it. Because this paper was a little more textured, I did have a harder time doing the lettering on it, but I really liked it for painting with. Also, if you want to do lettering on your painting but you feel nervous about doing it, write the words with pencil first so you can erase and rewrite until you get it how you like. Then go over it with a pen or a marker. And here is your beautiful Valentine's Day floral heart that you can use for a Valentine's Day card or as a lovely decor piece in your home. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.